In section 8.2, we'll talk about two types of paths or circuits. We'll get into what those are in a second. These are called Euler paths and Hamilton paths. Euler named for Leonard Euler we've already talked about, and Hamilton named for another mathematician. So at first, we need to define what we mean by a path. And it's very intuitive. A path is just if you start traveling through a graph by walking along edges, that describes a path. So say, for instance, we start at A, and you just start traveling along edges as you choose. So one path would be if I went down to D, and then over to E, up to B, and back down to D. So that would be one path. If you started at D, and went, or started at B rather, and went down to D, and then over to E, up to C, and back, and up to B, that would be another path. And since that one came back to where it started, we would call that a circuit. So a circuit is a specific type of path. A path could be one that's a circuit or one that's not. Um, it's a more general category. So you can construct paths and circuits as much as you want by traveling through a graph. Now, if you had a directed graph, you would only be able to travel in the direction of the arrows. So you'd be a little bit more restricted as to what kind of path you could draw through a graph. But an undirected one, you can travel along. Notice that in this first example, we didn't reuse any edges, but in the second example, we did. We went down from B to D and over to E, and then we went up to C and back along the same edge. So we use the same edge twice, and that'll be significant later in this section. So in short, a path is a sequence of edges. You can just describe what edges you're traveling along, and um, that describes the, the path that you travel. And then a circuit's just one that starts and ends in the same place. So we talked about one where the one of the edges was reused or not reused. If it reuses edges, that's not what's called a simple path or circuit. A simple path or circuit is one where you don't reuse any edges. And that, if you remember at the beginning of section 8.1, we talked about that problem with the bridges in Konigsberg that problem was to find a route through the city crossing each bridge exactly once. So we didn't want to reuse any. So that was an example of a simple path we were looking for. So before we get into the details of that, we have one more definition here of a connected graph. A connected graph is very intuitive. You can just visually observe that this one's connected and this one's not. There are two components that are disconnected. Here, this one's all connected. In short, a graph is connected if you can start at any node and find a path to another node. So in this case, if we start at A, for instance, there's no path over to C because they're disconnected. But on the left, from A to C, you can find a bunch of different paths that get there because it's connected. So connectivity, when, you're, when you observe the graph, it's pretty obvious when it's connected or not. But specifically, the definition is it's connected if you can find a path from any node to any other node. There's a quick note here for directed graphs. In that case, it's a little more complicated because a strongly connected one is one where you can travel along the directions of the arrows to get from one to another. A weakly connected one is if you discarded the arrows, you could sort of go the wrong way and eventually connect all of them. Okay. Then we get to this question of Euler paths, which goes back to the Konigsberg bridge problem. If we want to find a simple path that uses every edge, we want to cross every bridge once and only once. So a simple path is one that doesn't reuse edges, but we also want it to use all of them. So we want it to use all of them, but not reuse any of them. So use them exactly once. That's an Euler path. So we're using each edge exactly once. That's that is definition of an Euler path. Obviously, it's only possible in a connected graph because otherwise you wouldn't be able to touch all the points or cross through all the edges um, without jumping across some empty space. And then you can have an Euler circuit as well. It's just an Euler path that starts and ends at the same place. Now, if you want to, you can pause here and try to figure out what rule you would need to use to decide whether a graph has an Euler path or an Euler circuit or not. It turns out the conclusion is pretty simple. It's not obvious when you think of it on your own, but when you see it, it makes sense. So 
There's a rather long description here that you can read through on your own, just kind of observing some interesting things that happen and trying to draw some conclusions. But the final conclusion is here. It boils down to whether the degrees of the nodes are even or odd. So in this example, if we label the nodes of the Konigsberg bridge problem, the top one has three edges connecting to it, so it has a degree of three, and so on for the others. If you think about it, if the degree of a node is even, you could start there, you could leave and come back, and potentially leave and come back again and leave and come back again, using up two of the edges every time you did leave and come back. So it turns out that a graph has an Euler circuit if all of them are even, because you can start at any node, you can eventually you can leave it and then eventually come back to it and leave it and eventually come back to it over and over again until you've used all the edges. And as long as all of the nodes are even, you can arrive and leave each node over and over again and use an even number of edges each time. If there are two, exactly two odd ones, there's not an Euler circuit, but there is an Euler path if you start at one of the odd ones and end at the other, because you'll leave the first one one more time than you arrive, and you'll arrive at the last one one more time than you leave it. So you'll use up those odd edges. But if there are any other number of odd nodes other than zero or two, there's no Euler path or circuit. So all you have to do is count the degree of each node and then see if there are no even or no odd ones, all even, or if there are exactly two odd ones. If those are the cases, then you can figure out whether there's an Euler circuit or path, but any other number of odd ones means there's no Euler circuit or path. So without even trying different possibilities, we can immediately tell there's no Euler circuit or path for this bridge problem. Then you can go through an example and practice with a couple of these, finding whether there's an Euler path or circuit. Again, it just boils down to counting the degrees. And you can see in each example, it just follows that same pattern. Then there's a quick discussion of how to find an Euler circuit. If the graph is small enough, you can kind of just do it by trial and error. But this is a process you can follow if you want for a really complicated graph. It basically breaks it into chunks and handles one at a time. And I won't read through this in detail here, but you can go through, follow this example, and see how it works. Then if you have a directed graph, you can still adapt this rule to figure out whether there's going to be an Euler path or Euler circuit. And you can read through this definition here, but it basically expands that earlier conclusion to include directed graphs. And then you can see an example um, using that conclusion as well. So that's Euler paths and Euler circuits. Hamilton paths are a little different. You should read through this example and, and see um, how this can be useful, but in short, a Hamilton path is one that passes through every node exactly once. So an Euler circuit uses every edge exactly once, a Hamilton path uses every node exactly once, and might leave some edges unused. So for example, you can see over in the margin here, there's a, an example of a game that was used, um, that was built using this idea. And the red edges are the ones that are used in the Hamilton path. The black edges don't get used. So a Hamilton path doesn't use every edge, potentially, but the goal is to pass through every node exactly once. Now you might be hoping there's an easy rule for this one as well but it turns out there's not. There's not a simple rule that tells us for any graph whether there's a Hamilton path or circuit. There's a couple of conclusions, a few observations that you can uh, use if you happen to notice certain things. You can read through those on your own. Um, or you can just, for simple graphs like these, small ones, you can try, um, just try building one and see if you run into any issues. So you can follow that example to see how that makes sense. And that brings us to the end of section 8.2. Most of the section is dealing with Euler paths and Euler circuits because there's a more straightforward rule for them. Hamilton paths and circuits, we mostly have to stick to trial and error um, unless we happen to notice that they fit one of a few categories.